Hi, I'm Susan Lindquist. I'm a member of the Harvard Hughes Medical Institute, and I work at the Whitehead Institute at MIT. These are some of the common and uncommon neurodegenerative diseases you might have heard about. Alzheimer's disease and Parkinson's disease, frontal temporal dementia, Huntington's ALS, and Creutzfeldt-Jakob disease. And you can see these brown blobs inside of these cells. And those brown blobs are aggregated protein. 110 years ago, Alois Alzheimer saw the first patient who was ever officially named to have the disease that we know as Alzheimer's disease. This was a woman named August Dieter. Her picture is shown here on the right-hand side. And it might astonish you to know that she was 51 years old when this picture was taken. And she died four years later of Alzheimer's disease. She had one of the rare genetic forms of the disease. It actually ran in her family. When Alzheimer looked in the brain of August Dieter after her death, he saw two dense masses of misfolded aggregated protein. One he called senile plaques. We now call them amyloid plaques. And these were on the outside of the dying neurons. The others were called, he called neurofibrillary tangles. These were on the inside of the dying neuron. And there are different proteins in these two particular structures. The amyloid plaques contain largely a peptide called a beta, which is carved out of a larger protein called APP. The neurofibrillary tangles are almost entirely comprised of tau, a microtubule binding protein found inside many cells, but especially important for neurons. Interestingly enough, if you look at other neurodegenerative diseases like Parkinson's disease, or Lou Gehrig's disease, or frontotemporal dementia, you find similar aggregates of misfolded proteins. In each case, the primary protein in the aggregate is different, yet the fine structure of the aggregate, the cross beta sheet structure that the fibrils are comprised of, that particular structure is in fact very similar in all of these diseases. And that suggests there may be some underlying misfolding folding mechanism that is common to all of them. And it's one of the reasons many people study multiple diseases.